Thriving in love and romantic relationship is all about creating a relationship that supports both you and your partner in your individual purpose and potential, as well as setting up an environment that allows you, your partner, and your relationship to thrive. And it doesn't matter where you are in your romantic life right now, whether you're single or in a relationship, whether you're deciding whether to leave a relationship, perhaps you're completing or separating from a partner, or perhaps you're healing a broken heart after a relationship has ended. Maybe you're out there dating or you're being consciously single, or maybe you're starting a new relationship or simply looking at ways to nurture and improve your current relationship. It does not matter where you are right now. Everything you learn about conscious romantic relationships will support you to position yourself for the relationship that you truly desire, whether it's with your partner or with someone else in the future. And that's what this series on the podcast, which has been about conscious romantic relationships, is all about. Welcome to Relate Higher, a podcast dedicated to providing the leading standard in conscious, higher relating and to teaching you a conscious framework for all of your relationships. This is your go-to resource for developing meaningful, conscious relationships across your life. I'm your host, award-winning relationship coach and consultant and former family lawyer, Letitia Ringe. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this series on the podcast, which has been all about conscious romantic relationships. We have covered so much through this series, and in today's episode, I'm going to help wrap it all up in a bow for this series finale, as well as giving you practical steps that you can take from this point forward to implement everything that you've learned in the series on the podcast. It's likely that when you began the series, you were feeling quite overwhelmed when it comes to how to create the kind of thriving love and romantic partnership you desire. But after listening to each episode, you've been given practical and simple as well as a unique approach to relationships that will help you to achieve what you want. Now you'll leave this episode today with the tools to take the steps you need to implement everything you've learned. You'll leave today's episode feeling empowered, feeling clear and also in control of your romantic life, regardless of your relationship status and the quality of your relationship right now. First, let's remember what we've covered throughout this series on the podcast. I've taken you through six topics on the podcast, which impact romantic relationships. These six topics are the topics that most people find issues and challenges in within a romantic relationship, and they can be what is stopping you from entering into a committed, long-term, loving romantic partnership. Or if you're in a relationship right now, it's one, some, or even all of these topics that are preventing you from moving forward and experiencing the love, connection, and partnership you desire with your partner right now. It's a great thing to be aware of what the challenges are in our romantic life and our relationship, because this sets us up to find solutions to solve them. And that has been my intention by sharing with you the tools and subjects I've chosen to talk about on this series of the podcast, all with the intention of setting you up with the ability to pinpoint what you need to work on in your romantic life and romantic relationship. So the six topics we've covered are as follows. Topic number one was all about the power of commitment and how to deepen your commitment and know whether you're truly experiencing powerful commitment in a relationship. So many people think they're committed to their partner. They think they're committed to the relationship they desire. They think they're committed to the life that they desire, but your life and the quality of your relationship, all of the issues, as well as all of the great things about your relationship right now, that is a reflection of what you're truly committed to. And in order to improve things, you have to deepen your commitment. You have to change some of your commitments so that you step into what feels like uncomfortable and even risky territory to take a stand for what you truly want to commit to. This requires self-leadership as well as leadership within your relationship. 
relationship because someone has to go first. We can't wait for our partner or a future partner to commit for us. We have to start with committing to what we want first and then life, relationship and our partner, they will either step up to meet us or create space so that we can be with someone who can meet us in that level of commitment. Topic two was all about communication and the three different types of conscious communication that are needed within any romantic relationship in order to create the thriving relationship you desire. Almost every single issue in a relationship comes down to communication and the way you are communicating with one another. So if you notice that you have another topic we've talked about that is a problem for you in your relationship, it's quite likely that communication is also a problem. Learning how to effectively communicate as a person in a romantic relationship, as well as a human generally who has relationships with other people all across your life is one of the most valuable skills that you can learn. So it sets you up for success, not only in creating a sustainable and thriving relationship, but also knowing how to communicate with other people in your life at large. The third topic we covered was all about conscious conflict, how to healthily navigate conflict so that it's no longer something you avoid. And it's also no longer something you're afraid of. Conflict is normal in all relationships and especially in your romantic relationship because of the closeness in physical proximity, as well as love and caring, you and your partner will have conflicts because you're humans. You're two different people with different points of view, different experience, different needs, different desires. It's about learning how to healthily and peacefully navigate conflict Also, so you have a different point of reference that is more positive than the point of reference you're likely to have right now, which is seeing conflict as bad and icky rather than conflict as being a sign that you and your partner are open and vulnerable enough to deal with differences in opinions. This will set you up for a sustainable romantic relationship as well as a relationship where you are both more deeply connected and have the ability to also see and understand yourselves more deeply. The fourth topic we covered was all about connection, specifically how to create meaningful connection, how to have better sex, and also how to experience deeper intimacy over a long-term relationship so that your connection, your sex, and your intimacy gets better, deeper, and higher over time because you're in a long-term relationship. This is a very different expectation for a romantic relationship because most people believe that intimacy, attraction, connection, etc., will fade over time in a romantic partnership. But the way that I teach you connection is how connection is created and how you can deepen that connection because you know each other so deeply. But this shouldn't be the case. Your connection, your experience of sex and intimacy together as a couple should be getting better over time. It's all about the way you deal with stagnation and it's all about knowing how to create that depth that you're looking for. The fifth topic we covered was all about collaboration and co-creation, how to come together as a powerful and magnetic team where you're still deeply turned on and attracted by one another And you're also combining forces to create being a couple that most people never get to experience, but the couple that so many people look up to and are inspired by. This is because of your ability to collaboratively come together as a team and a unit in life, supporting both of your individual dreams and desires, as well as creating an environment that allows you and your relationship to thrive. The sixth and final topic we covered was all about, of course, consciousness, how to expand and raise your consciousness as an individual and in your relationship so that you can powerfully lead your relationship to a place that is truly allowing both you and your partner, as well as your relationship to thrive. You need to have an expanded awareness and be powerfully moving from a place of love and intention in order to achieve this. And this is what you're doing when you're learning how to approach your romantic life and relationship 
consciously. These are the six main areas in a romantic relationship that will tell you where your work needs to be in order to improve the quality of your romantic life and also your relationship with a partner, whether it's with a partner now or in the future. And it's this work that needs to be done regardless of where you are in your romantic life right now. So if you're deciding whether to leave a relationship, completing a relationship or healing from a completion or you're dating, starting a new relationship or in an existing long term relationship, the work that needs to be done to create the thriving romantic partnership and love that you desire comes down to these six areas. So what do we do next? Well, first of all, you want to be really honest with yourself about what areas need your attention. Which of these six topics do you know you need to work on? And then you want to remind yourself of the most important mindset shift that every single person in romantic relationships needs to make in order to step into their power. And the mindset shift is this. Great relationships are created not found. And I have full capacity and power to create the relationship that I desire. The work begins with me. It's really important that you stop outsourcing your power and responsibility to your partner, to a future partner, or to finding the one, this one person where all problems will cease to exist. It doesn't happen because no matter how conscious your partner is, how amazingly aligned your partner is, you and your partner will grow and evolve throughout your life. There will be seasons where one of your consciousness is limited and the others is more expansive. There will be times in life where you feel more aligned and times where you don't because you are growing and evolving as individuals. You need to learn how to cope with growth and change and different seasons of consciousness and be able to be in a relationship that allows both you and your partner to be humans. We have to work with ourselves, otherwise we don't set ourselves up for success. So learning how to create a great relationship, regardless of who else is in the relationship, comes down to how you show up in your romantic life and relationship. It's about recognizing your power, your responsibility, and focusing on expanding your own capacity. It doesn't mean that you need to get things perfect. It means you start where you are and you are committed to approaching these six areas we've talked about in a way that is conscious. I've given you lots of tools to start doing that, which brings me to my second point. The work begins with you. So if you're not in a relationship right now, you can start today learning how to be in a conscious romantic relationship. You can begin today learning how to expand your consciousness, learning how to approach each of these six areas consciously so that you have the capacity to be in the kind of romantic relationship you desire. This means that you will attract someone who also has the capacity to be in that kind of relationship. It'll be up to you to then choose someone who also is committed to doing this work. But even if you choose the perfect partner, like I mentioned before, it will not prevent the inevitable happening, which is that sometimes you'll be more open to doing work than at other times. Sometimes you'll be showing up more consciously than others. At times you'll feel like you're on the same page and at other times you won't be. Learning how to create connection in spite of all of this and be supportive of one another throughout the long term of your relationship is essential. So shifting your focus to yourself as much as possible throughout your relationship journey is where you'll find your power. Now, if you are in a relationship and your partner does not want to do any work to improve the relationship, my advice is that you begin with yourself because you will impact the relationship dynamic and that will set you up to be in alignment with the kind of relationship you want so that if in the future it doesn't shift things in a way that satisfies you and your partner's still not willing to do the work, What will happen is either by embodying the work, you will inspire your partner by showing and being the example of what's possible to step up and join you, or you'll be in a position to create a relationship.
relationship with someone else who does have that capacity and who's able to meet you in the relationship you desire. So to summarize, our first step is to recognize which of the six areas we need to focus our attention on. Secondly, it's the mindset shift of recognizing that great relationships are created, not found. And thirdly, it's about doing the work yourself first. Start with you, focus your attention on you because you make a huge impact on your relationship and your romantic life. And you are the only person you're in control of. When you are the example, you inspire other people, including your partner to step up into that space. And you also position yourself for the relationship that you desire. Now, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed about where to start first, when it comes to implementing a conscious relationship in your life, whether you're single or in a relationship right now, I've got you covered. I've decided to create a new program for you all called the conscious relationship. In this program, I will be sharing with you my exact process for implementing conscious relationship tools into a romantic relationship. You will learn a monthly process that you can use in your relationship now or in the future on repeat to set you up with those six areas we've covered in the podcast series so far. You'll also learn how to start the conscious chapter of your romantic relationship, whether you're starting a new relationship, positioning yourself for a relationship in the future, or implementing conscious relationship into a current relationship you're in right now. You'll also learn practical conscious relationship tools that you can draw upon as is needed throughout your relationship. For example, when you're in a conflict with your partner, by having a monthly process, as well as a clear beginning of your conscious relationship and conscious relationship tools that you can draw upon as are needed in your romantic relationship. This sets you up to thrive in love and romantic partnership. And if you're not in a relationship right now, it will help you feel prepared and safe knowing how you can create a romantic relationship. One of the biggest blocks I see in the clients I support when it comes to dating and calling in their next partner is that they simply cannot see how a romantic relationship can be successful and allow them to thrive in the way they desire. In the conscious relationship, you'll be learning exactly how to do that so that when you're in a relationship, you know exactly how to set it up for success and then what processes and tools to use throughout your relationship to allow you to thrive. And if you're in a relationship right now, it will show you exactly what to implement in your relationship so that you're shifting the dynamic between your partner and you're positioning and supporting both of you to thrive in your relationship together and to take it to new and better heights. You'll be able to use this process for the rest of your relationship and it will have you stepping into relationship leadership so that your friends and family and people who have the pleasure of witnessing your relationship really look up to you. Enrollment opens on the 29th of July and there is a waitlist available for you to put your name on today. This waitlist will give you access to the program as soon as it is open and available for enrollment, as well as receiving an exclusive discount that won't be offered anywhere else. Head to relatehire.com forward slash the conscious relationship. Put your name on the wait list, or if you're watching this in the future, you'll find the details there about how to enroll. Next, if you haven't yet completed my free community masterclass called Create Thriving Relationships Today, I recommend you go ahead and do that now because that masterclass, as well as the embodiment exercises and the self-reflection questions I give you there, will provide you with a roadmap for what you need to work on in your romantic life and relationship. You can get access to that at relatehire.com forward slash masterclass. Finally, if you know that you want to radically transform your love life and romantic relationship, whether you're in a relationship right now or not, whether you're deciding whether to leave a relationship, completing a relationship right now, healing from a relationship completion, dating, starting a new relationship, or improving and nurturing and supporting an existing relationship, I can help you in my conscious relationship coaching program. In this program, we do the deep work that is needed to realign you with the thriving love and romantic relationship you desire. 
I will help you to identify protective patterns that are standing in the way of the love and relationship you desire, as well as helping you to come up with new connective patterns and healthy ways of relating and being in the world that have you getting and creating what you want. You'll also get clear on what you really need and desire within your life as well as a romantic relationship so that you're stepping into a conscious relationship with yourself first and then able to create the relationship and love life that you desire. You'll also learn and practice the conscious relationship skills that you need to learn in order to be in and have the capacity to show up for the relationship that you desire. And finally, you'll be guided through a process that will support you step by step as you consciously approach the phase of the relationship cycle you're in right now. So if you're dating, you'll learn how to consciously approach dating. If you're ending a relationship, you'll learn how to consciously complete a relationship. If you're improving a relationship, you will learn how to consciously do that either with your partner on board or just with you repositioning the dynamic. If you're deciding whether to leave a relationship right now, you'll learn how to consciously approach that process. If you're healing your heart from a previous relationship or maybe one from a long time ago, you will learn how to consciously approach heartbreak. And finally, if you're about to enter into a new relationship, you will learn how to consciously approach that chapter. Because even though it's incredibly exciting, for a lot of people, a lot of fear comes up and we can be very self-destructive. The most self-destructive thing you can do is not be prepared for the relationship you want and not have the tools to support you in creating that. This is what you'll learn how to do in my conscious relationship coaching program. It's a completely bespoke program designed for you personally to be taken through a transformative process that will have you setting yourself up with an environment that you can thrive in when it comes to love and romantic relationships. You can do this on your own, or if you're in a relationship with your partner, you can find out all the details on how to apply at relatehire.com forward slash CRCP. So there you go, everyone. These are the steps you can now take to implement everything you've learned in this series on the podcast. Remember that you're doing this so that you can create the relationship that you most desire, so that you can create a relationship that allows you, your partner, and your relationship to thrive, and so that you and your partner can be in a relationship, either now or in the future, that supports both of your individual purpose and potential. No dream squashing here. Your relationship allows for your growth and expansion. I want to thank you for being here and being a part of the Relate Higher community and also the Relate Higher movement. Relate Higher has been created as a place that will support you to do that work, giving you simple and practical ways to consciously approach your romantic life as well as your relationships in general. The term conscious relationship can be tied to the conscious community and the spiritual community, but the way that we're teaching it here is really about simply approaching love and relationship from a place of consciousness, which means moving from a place of love versus fear with awareness, as well as with intention. Coming up, you'll enjoy some bonus episodes and then we'll be moving into a new series on the podcast, which will be focusing on one specific phase of the romantic relationship cycle. I look forward to seeing you there. Bye. Thank you for listening to Relate Higher, your go-to resource for learning how to consciously approach all of your relationships. To deepen your learning and practice, make sure you're subscribed to receive the Relate Higher community newsletter. This is a weekly newsletter sent to you every Monday, providing further coaching and education to support your relationships. Subscribe at relatehigher.com forward slash community. And if you haven't yet left a five-star review for the podcast, we ask that you please do that now so that this podcast can reach other listeners who also want to learn and practice conscious higher relating. Because remember, the more people who learn, the better relationships we all enjoy. Mm